police would be here to meet us. Yes, Wayne. Oh, local cop is in hospital on the mainland. Apparently the prisoner we're transporting put him there. This prisoner being Barry Roselle? Yeah. Locals call him the Stokes Island monster. That's not exactly PC when he's being transported for psychiatric assessment, is it? I don't think the folks around here are really the PC type, man. Where's this Roselle now? On his way, he's under citizen's arrest. A ute. Now I would have thought a dangerous criminal at least deserved an arm and car. That can't be serious. How long do you think he's been like that for? Apparently he's violent and unpredictable. Took a cop's ear off with his teeth. This guy said they'd like to tie a slab around his neck and throw him off the end of the wharf. Prisoner coming through. Let's start by getting that sack off him. I've never seen anything more degrading. Don't you get rid of that fencing wire? You sure, ma'am? The boss said to keep him restrained. Okay. While he's under Navy watch, he'll be restrained in a manner that is humane and dignified. Don't do you that. You all right? Yeah, Did no, he get no. you? Yeah, no, I'm okay. Just make sure that he's well secured. Yes, ma'am. Legs together. Set legs together. The other arm. Uh, permission to take lunch to the prisoner, sir? No, denied. No. I've asked Swain to take a meal to him. He's on his way down now. Thanks, Bert. All right, you must be getting hungry by now, huh? All right. This could be a little awkward, but uh, if you cooperate, you'll make it easier on both of us, all right? Correct protocols were followed in restraining the prisoner and a continuous recorded surveillance was maintained. And you've watched this whole tape? Yes, ma'am. And there's nothing to indicate a point where the prisoner actually died. And at no point was he sedated? No, ma'am. Was any excessive force used before the tape started rolling, Boson? No, ma'am. Thank you, Petty Officers. That'll be all. Could you please wait outside? Yes, ma'am. This could be very damaging. You'll see there's no implication for Hammersley's crew. Not in a legal sense, but it could be seen as a failure in duty of care. A death in custody, man. Exactly, and if the press start using those words, we'll find ourselves in a PR nightmare. The island's medical clinic has requested a supply drop-off. I want Hammersley to do it. Think of it as a public relations exercise. Understood. Thank you. That's all. I'll be right behind you.
Max, are you free for a drink tonight? I've got something I'd like to discuss. Sure. She scares me. You see the way she stared at me about the physical thing? Hey, isn't that that ASIO speak? Miss Cruz. Miss Cruz? Last time we spoke, you said I was a security risk. But my file is confidential, so I've got to wonder. How do you know what's in it? Miss Cruz, you can't just tell a man he's a security risk and not give him a reason why. And what made you access my phone in the first place? Am I that interesting to you? There's nothing in my file that makes me a security risk, unless you know something that I don't. Who said your classification had anything to do with your file? I'll never forget my introduction to the delights of a good red. What was it? Shiraz? 1988 Kunawara. You said it tasted like cherries, so we got through two bottles. And then I told you about how my dog died, and I think I started crying. We can blame that particular night on the grape. Hey, Max, I was wondering... Yes? This is awkward. The thing is, it's weird actually, it's about the bone marrow test. Ryan and I are a match, and he and his father aren't. Have you ever considered the possibility that I could be Ryan's father? Mike, there's no chance. I did the sums a long time ago. Ryan is not your son. I know you would have told me. I, it's just that I've never asked. I understand. Now, this calls for another drink. Yeah. Yes? I've heard you're a man who knows his way around the internet. <sighs> would you steal a car? Huh? Would you steal a bat? Would you steal a TV? Because if this is about illegal downloads, I'm not interested. No, no, no. I just want to borrow your research skills. What for? Some top secret research. What kind of research? I want you to gather some information for me on the spook, Madeline Cruz. I take it that this isn't the kind of information that would be readily available on the ASIO website? Exactly. So you want me to hack into the country's national intelligence organisation? Yes. Risk my security clearance? Well... Just to get information on some woman who snubbed you? Is that right? Uh, all right. If it's a big deal and you think you're going to get caught, then... Who said I was going to get caught? So you'll do it? I didn't say that. In fact, I don't remember ever having this conversation. You sure you're happy with that course, midshipman? Yes, sir. You're planning on going under or over that sandbar? <laughs> Sir, Operation Builder Bridge is ready to go. Swain and I will do the supply drop to the clinic and Dutch is going to organise rib rides for whoever wants them. Very good. <coughs> oh, and two dads in charge are very kindly offered to visit the local primary school to have spread some Navy cheer. Your plan is to pass red to red at 1.5 miles? Beginning at five miles distance. Make it ten. Don't want to scare them. Sir. Very good, X. Sir. X. Word from NAVCOM is that Barry Rizal died from an aneurysm related to a tumour pressing on his brain. Cancer? Could that explain his convulsions, do you think? Maybe. At any rate, it gets us off the hook. So he was dying and nobody cared? Nobody knew. The cancer was undiagnosed. So are we still doing the PR thing, sir? Yes, two dads, we are. OK, good. I still get to visit the school then. If you're thinking of challenging the local kids to a game of poker, two dads, you have sunk to a new low. Well, I can't help it if no one will play on this boat with me. All right, you're all a bunch of chickens. I'll play with you. What? I know my way around a game of Texas Hold'em. I can take him. You're a brave man, Mids. But here's a word of advice. 
make the steaks edible. <clears throat> we'll get paid. Can I help you? Uh, yes, we're waiting to see Dr. Wallace. Oh, of course you are. McGregor and Blake, the sailors with the drugs. Oh, Ruby. That is beautiful. Oh. How about that? Do, do you know where he is? You're looking at him. John Wallace, GP. <laughs> Come along then, I've got patients waiting. The storeroom's out the back. Do you know what these drugs are for? Yeah, they're um, chemotherapy. Hey, doctor, the young cancer patient in there. Ruby Johnson. Are, are you treating her? While well, I'm giving her all the right drugs. Will she recover? Not likely. So why is she not in the mainland in a hospital having treatment? I'm doing my best for her. Yeah, the man that we transported, Barry Rosal. The monster? He died of a brain tumour. Apparently, it was undiagnosed. Do you know what kind of tumour? No, I don't. Right, Doctor, I'll just need your signature on that inventory. There's something in the water, Lieutenant. Oh, what are you talking about? The cancer. It's the water. And what makes you think that? Because I've been working in this community for a decade and in medicine for 30 years, and I've never seen so much cancer. And you think that it's in the drinking water here? The ocean. It's full of toxins. Don't swim in it. Don't eat anything from it. I can't save you if you do. Doctor, it's equipment. Is it medical equipment? <laughs> you could say that. It's my distillery. I make rum. For medicinal purposes. <laughs> Little girl, she should be receiving proper treatment. Well, she's having chemotherapy. I suppose that's all the doctor can do. Oh, doctor? He's an alcoholic. You could smell the booze on him. Oh, unpleasant. Incompetent. Now, he failed to diagnose Barry Rosal's brain tumour, and then he says you can catch cancer from fish. Sir, there's contact on the radar at possible FFV. How far? Just over the horizon, stationary. Could have a long lines in the water. Let's see if we can get a visual, confirm it's a fishing vessel. X, stand by with a boarding party. Can't see anything. Any movement? Nothing, X. OK, Dutchie, check the hole. It's way in two days with me. Yes, ma'am. Australian Navy! Australian Navy! Australian Navy! Hello? Hello! Abba Kaba? Hey! Abba Kaba? <coughs> Abba Gus? Hello? Abba Gus? Hello, do you speak any English? Swain, what is wrong with these men? Uh, uh, Ma'am, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be a virus or a gastro, maybe, but that wouldn't explain these rests. Looks like these guys just had lunch. Maybe there is something in the water, X. Thanks, Laurie. <laughs> Come on, guys, stop gassing it. We need to get this stuff started. Put your clipboard down, boy. Shut up, Cowie. Hey, Ray. How are you going with that little research project? I have no idea what you're talking about. I am nearly done here. Sir. You away from the hospital? The men are responding to rehydration. I think they're going to be OK. Not cancer, then? No. For a moment there, I thought that Dr Wallace was onto something. I even recommended that Fisheries conduct some further testings on the waters around Stokes Island. Boss? Visitor's on his way. Ah, this must be Jason Merritt. Well, at least we know Fisheries took your report seriously. Well, if there is something wrong, this is the guy that's going to find it. So, you can see here, three varieties of algal bloom recorded and charted over a five-year period. Well, how soon after we drop you at Stokes Island can you get some results from the water there? Well, I'll have an early idea as soon as I run samples through the testing kit. Well, tonight then? Probably, but uh, my prediction is that cyanobacteria caused the problem. Um... Oh, sorry, uh, cyanobacteria is also known as blue-green algae. Oh. We've been charting fluctuations in the area for five years. Is there a chance that uh, this blue-green algae is a carcinogen? You've been talking to Dr Wallace. Oh, you know him? 
Only by reputation? Well, he thinks that there is something in the water causing unusually high levels of cancer in the community there. He's a drunk. Well, and yet, the fishermen who we found, they were made very sick from eating the fish in that area. The symptoms of acute blue-green algae poisoning include intestinal cramping and respiratory difficulty, as well as skin irritation, like you saw in the fishermen, but not related to cancer. Game on? Right. I thought you'd wimped out on me. What, miss an opportunity to clean up? No chance. <laughs> so we're playing for matchsticks, are we? A uh, hundred of them. Absolutely, mate. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. How are you going to keep the girl when you keep tossing your money away like this? <laughs> what girl? Come on, mate. I live in Goat Central too, yeah? You mean bird. You get caught maintaining a relationship on the boat and you're going to be out on your ear. Just don't let it go. We're not in a relationship. Yeah, right. Don't worry, buddy. I'll look after you just after I kick your ass. You're not considering gambling, are you, two dads? No, sir. No, I wouldn't dream of it. Not for a million dollars, sir. <laughs> Small blind. Let's go. Where's our guest? You abandoned him already, right? Oh, he's on his way up, but I warn you, he is not very interesting. Oh, make yourself at home, Jason. Oh, I won't get in your way. X, I've got Dr. Wallace on the line for you. OK, put it on speaker, Ro. Are uh, you sure about that, ma'am? He seems um, fairly intoxicated. No, go ahead. Dr. Wallace. Heard about the fishermen? They had algal poisoning. Don't you believe it. <laughs> it's rubbish. Dr. Wallace, are you all right? You sound a little tired. I'm fine. Come and see me, Lieutenant. I have evidence. What sort of evidence? Heavy metal in the water. Toxic waste causing the cancer. Come and see me. I'll prove it to you. Are you finished yet? I thought this was supposed to be secret research. It is. Could try and be a little more clandestine. Okay, now Operation PO is go. Operation PO? It's a code. Uh, Madeline Cruz PO. Oh, it's a cruise ship, yeah, right. What have you found out? I managed to tap into ASIO's secure site. Mm. What happened? What's it saying? What? Just fried my hard drive. What? Your little project just killed my computer. Operation P&O. Oh, why don't you guys see what's biting? You don't want us to tag along? I think the doctor wanted to see me on my own. Oh, doctor. I, I've got the data ready to show you. Come on, follow me. Can you tell me about this evidence that you have? I've got data on arsenic, mercury, beryllium. But in the water? I've done the tests myself. The water's toxic. People swim in it, they fish from it, and it's killing them. But, but where do you think the toxins, where are they coming from? Well, my guess is mining tailings. But I wasn't aware that there was any mining industry around this area. Ocean dumping, Lieutenant. <laughs> Happens all the time in Asia. Well, now it's happening here. Now, are you sure there's no patients or children in there? Oh, no, we, we hadn't yet reopened after lunch. There's no one else. My distillery. No, leave, leave the distillery. Leave it. That still's been tampered with. You tell that to your insurance company because I don't think they're going to believe you. Right, X. Yeah, yeah, I'm OK. Just see if you can save the rest of it. Somebody wanted to destroy the evidence. Somebody Stop knew it. it was hidden behind the still. The fisheries department, they have conducted tests and they have found nothing to support your accusations. It's a cover-up. And now my own evidence is destroyed, my own data. Convenient. I did some research on your monster. He wasn't a monster. His name was Barry Roselle. His tumour was extremely rare. Only 43 reported cases in the whole world. Well, that is extremely unlucky. Ruby Johnson has the same tumour. Is she just unlucky too? Are you saying that she could end up like that? It's possible. 
And you believe that the only explanation for the tumours are the toxins in the water? I'm certain. I, I can't do anything more, Lieutenant. No, no, not with somebody trying to kill me. Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I've got something to give you. What is that? It's a basic water tester. Tests for chemical residue. I got it on eBay. It's simple enough to use. I know, but you're not giving up. What about Ruby? I'm sorry, Kate. Ruby's best chance for justice lies with you. So we just took off. Yeah, he genuinely believes that he was targeted by someone. Oh, I don't know, X. I took a look at that steel. It was dodgy as. It was basically an explosion waiting to happen. Yeah, but he claimed that it was sabotaged. Yeah, he's just trying to cover his own negligence. You could have been killed. It might be best for you to leave this alone now, Kate. The appropriate authorities are investigating. But it can't be a coincidence that little Ruby Johnson has the same very rare form of cancer that killed Barry Rose, or what if the doctor really did have something? Then he would have found another way to ensure the truth got out. Look, Jason Merritt's testing the water. If the doctor's suspicions are correct, he'll return with some interesting results. Sir, uh, Dr Wallace has put in a request for emergency transportation to Cairns Hospital. Um, apparently Ruby Johnson has taken a turn for the worse. Let's organise to have the patient come on board. X, get in touch with Jason Merritt. Tell him if he wants a ride, he'll need to leave now. Special C duty, man in cable party close up. Assume damage control state three, conditional void. She's gonna be okay, Swain. He's one sick kid. Just doesn't seem fair, does it? Face. Oh, I'm just a man looking forward to a low cholesterol, low GI meal. Bird's got brown rice on, especially for me. Carve me up, bird. Chippies for me. Uh, no can do. I just gave the last lot to Ryan. Hey, you're lucky you're even getting lunch at all, the way you ripped him off in poker. Making it a little bit obvious, aren't you? What? You and Bird. She keeps doing your favours, sticking up for you. Pretty soon, everyone is going to know that you are on. The last time, we're not on. Losing your money to the best poker player on this tub, that's inevitable. Losing your job because of a girl, that's just plain dumb. Don't say I didn't tell you. Maintain course and speed. You always head off in a rush, or just today? We've got a sick child on board. I hope you had time to finish your testing. There's no more mercury in these fish than you'll find at your local fish and chip shop. Are the trace metals? All clear. Now, I saw John Wallace this morning. Now, his research returned evidence of heavy metal residue in the seawater. He showed you this evidence? No. Because he doesn't have any. John Wallace should stick to what he knows best, medicine and moonshine. Well, you know about his distillery? I thought you'd never met him. What, well, the man has a reputation. I didn't see his evidence because it was destroyed by fire. He thinks that somebody tampered with his still. Can you come with me? There's something I'd like you to see. Her name is Ruby. She is seven years old and she is being treated for cancer. And if that's not bad enough, her type of cancer will cause her to experience convulsions and fits of psychotic violence until she finally dies of a brain aneurysm. And very rare, there's only 59 cases in the world. And two of those came from Stokes Island. It's got nothing to do with me. Dr Wallace thinks that there's someone in fisheries covering up evidence of what is going on out there. I know nothing about that. But the only people who knew about my meeting with Dr Wallace were my crewmates and you. Are you saying I had something to do with the fire? I think that you told someone about my meeting with Wallace, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you are a liar. If you know anything at all about what is going on out there, you have a responsibility to say so because right now there is a price being paid and that price is that little girl's life. I need you to conduct some research for me. Are you serious? I thought 
thought I asked you to leave Wallace's ocean dumping theory alone. But you also said that if the doctor really believes his theory to be correct, then he will find a means to prove it. Yes. So maybe that means is me. So I take it you're not buying Jason's results? No, not for a minute, but I guarantee somebody else is because whoever is dumping this waste in the water, they need somebody to cover their tracks. Even if you're right, hundreds of ships must transit past Stokes Island every year. Yeah, but not all of those ships would have been transiting over five years ago when the cancer first started to appear. Okay, but narrowing it down to a few possible suspects is still needle in a haystack stuff. Which is exactly why I have Robert on the job. Oi, what are you doing? This isn't funny anymore. What's your problem? I had a pack of cards. Now I don't. Someone's pilfered them. I doubt it. We're the only casino bogan around here, mate. Maybe someone staged an intervention. Or maybe it was your monkey. Uh, ma'am, mm -hmm. I've got something. Oh, that was quick. Thank you. Um, so I've got six vessels that transit Stoke Island that were also transiting over five years ago. Well done. Uh, there's more. The foreign flag palm oil trader is 10 kilometres off Stokes Island. It's in the shipping lane now. Sir. Australian Navy, welcome. What can I do for you? You're the master of the vessel, sir. Sure in. Oh, well, your vessel's been selected for random inspection, so we'll need to see your log books and check that your cargo's in order, sir. Oh, that's no probs. Two dads. Ma'am? I'm gonna grab the log books and the manifest. Ma'am. We'll take a look around here. So maybe we could start with these tanks. Sure. Thank you. It's only palm oil. These, ma'am. Seems to be in order, ma'am. Give me a look. Are you expecting to be in Cairns on schedule, Captain? Well, maybe. Oh? A little bit behind with this holder. This one's empty. Oh, that's maintenance. Two tanks. It's in the log. Everything seems to be in order here. Thank you very much for your time. We'll be off. Thank you. Sorry, X. No contaminated water, just palm oil. It was just a hunch. You're required at Navcom 7800, second floor. What for? You told them I tried to hack into the ASIO site, didn't you? No, I didn't. But if I'm asked, I'll tell them everything. Petty officer? You any good with computers? I'm not completely useless, why? So you might be able to help me sort out a security situation. Involving computers? Yes. Possibly. But I thought you considered me a security risk. I do. I'd like you to tell me exactly what motivated you to hack into a secure website. You thought I wouldn't find out. I'm not sure why you're accusing me of it. Would you prefer me to drag your radio officer in here and strip him of his security clearance? No, ma'am. I have no doubt you put him up to it. I'd like to know why. Well, you keep telling me I'm a security risk, but you don't give me a reason why. And you think snooping around confidential information is a way of finding out? I have a right to know what you have on me. What I have on you is your fatal flaw. My what? Your extracurricular activities. You mean my social life? You're hardly discreet. <laughs> my personal life does not interfere with my job. Your affair with that woman who murdered her husband almost cost you your job, not to mention your freedom. You know about that? I know more than you realise. Including a man of your inclination is an easy target. How many late night confessions have you made? It's a shame that your Achilles is the very thing that makes you so attractive. You've got me all wrong. I doubt that. If I tested you, I'm sure you'd fail.
Kate McGregor. Lieutenant. Yes, who's this? Jason Merritt. Braxton Mining's gone too far. I need to speak with you. Oh, are you going to give me the details? I'm still involved in getting over the phone. Meet me tonight and I'll tell you everything. OK, where? Somewhere public. Yiggy's pub. Oh, how's eight? I'll see you then. Suicide? He had the gun in his hand. But why would he go to the trouble of organising a meeting with me if he was planning to kill himself? If Jason was taking bribes from a mining company or involved in some kind of a cover-up, he would have been under huge pressure. Maybe somebody just got to him before he could talk. It's a possibility. Hey. Hey. Why the long face next? You know that feeling you get when you're drawing close to something but you can't quite touch it? Yeah. It's called the chase. I love it. But what about when it just all seems too hard? Well, I reckon the hard part comes after the chase when everything gets all boring. I guess the trick is not to give up. Sorry. Hello? Pretty Officer Mulholland? It's Madeline Cruz. Hello? We need to talk. I'll wait for you at the go on bar. Tonight. Twenty hundred. What? Wait, is that someone you're chasing? No. Looks like someone's chasing me. Hi, sexy. I'm here. Where are you? No. Not this time. You're testing me, and I win. I'm not as big a risk as you think. Fine, I believe you. There is no relationship. <clears throat> oh, it's okay, expert playing for matchsticks. Yeah. <clears throat> Whose girl is it? X, that, that's an ace. Where did you get these? Um, I must have picked them up by accident. Well, where did you get them? I needed to replace my deck, I'm sorry. Sweet I don't care how you got them. I want to know where you got them now. From the Palm Oil Boat, ma'am, in the wheelhouse. Thank you. Marine Services said that the trader left Port Gallagher at 0800. They were heading north. There is a Braxton Mining Group location at Bandra, which is, what, 25 kilometres inland from Port Gallagher? You think they've made a collection? I think that they are using the palm oil as a cover to come into the country to collect mining tailings and then transporting the toxic waste in the palm oil containers. And my guess is that they are heading out to a dump site now near Stokes Island and we could catch them red-handed. Let's go. We have contact with our trader, sir. RO, make the call. Trader on my starboard bow. This is HMAS Hammersley at a stop or heave. Do oh, we? Sir, take a look water. at this. They're pumping over the side of the deck. Whatever it is, it's not grey water. They're not stopping. No, they're picking up the pace. They're heading for the line. They're trying to dump the waste before we board them, but once they're out of the line, we can't board them without proof. Let's get some.
going on next? Get all away! Come on the other side! Come on the other side! Sir, the crew are on the attack. We're having trouble getting in to obtain a sample, sir. Two miles to the line, sir. Charge, prepare another rib party. Aye, sir. Robert. Bird. We can't let them cross that line, X. Keep coming. Look out! Okay. We're going in for a second attempt now. Roger that, X. I'm sending over another rib party to assist. Copy that, sir. Heading to your port side. Copy that, Charge. Second is off. Okay, take us in again. We're going to use the second rib as a decoy, over. Watch out, this is the second rib. Charge, swing around, starboard, and keep it busy. Pull up. Other side, other side. Get back. Copy that. Get me in there. Go, go, go. I need this. the line X, we need that sample. Charge, I need a little more time. I'll be here now, I'll be here. I'll be here all day, X. Okay, we've got him, let's go! Right. 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 It's a positive, sir, it's a positive. Well done, X. Jurisdiction on this boat, we're no, no longer in Australia. It's waters. over for you, mate. The waste that you dumped. What waste? We're carrying palm oil and we're heading home empty. I'll show you the log. Hey, hey. No, the waste that you dumped, it tested positive for mercury and arsenic. Now we have scientific evidence. The exact what? time There's and location of the dumping has been recorded on that camera. Game over, mate. Dr. Wallace? Hello, Lieutenant. Hey. How is she? Um, the nurses say she is responding to treatment. Oh, that's good news. Things are looking up. The police have arrested three executives from the Braxton Mining Group and they've been charged with illegal ocean dumping, arson and the murder of Jason Merritt. Thank you, Lieutenant. Most people wouldn't bother to listen. Even fewer would have the courage to follow up on something like this. You were right all along and I'm sorry it took me so long to get with the program. I think the people of Stokes Island are very lucky to have you, Doctor. Oh, looking after people is what I do. It's good for the Constitution. Well, I thought that's what the rum was for. <laughs> well, rum is good for just about everything. So, you're plying me with wine? The food's taking forever. What's up? Am I that easy to read? My wine goggles give me clarity. <laughs> Mike, I lied to you the other day. You caught me off guard and my first instinct was to defend and the next thing I know, I am 
lying to you. The truth is, I knew you being Ryan's dad was a possibility. But I just swept it under the carpet. It was easier not to think about it. So to answer your question honestly, yes, I think you could be Ryan's father. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's been 20 years. I'm so sorry, Mike. I don't know, maybe if I hadn't been married, things would be different. Oh. Max, I wished things were different, but I never acted on that because... I was married. Right. And so it was just uh, one beautiful night. Yeah, that's all it was. <laughs>